Okay. All right. It's good to see you guys. So, um, I think happy Easter to everyone. Welcome. I was asked about offerings. Um, now, uh, offerings are important, but I don't believe we have to have an offering at every service. So if you came today, and this is your opportunity for Easter Sunday worship, um, I'm going to ask you to give your offering to Bill Long. And Bill thanks you in advance, and I thank you in advance. Um, it is important, but um, one of the things the conference asks us not to do is to handle money, and so I want to be faithful in, in, in keeping with that. And I do want to say thank you to all of you. Um, I wasn't sure how many or who would be here. So welcome on this early, early Easter morning, and happy Easter to all of you. How many of you grew up going to Easter sunrise services? Um, <clears throat> the most, uh, the ones that stick in my mind are the ones that were in Dorchester County. And I served there for several years, and they always asked me to speak. It was set right next to the bridge on the Cambridge side of the river. If you know anything about the, the uh, Chop Tank River, it's constant wind. And for the five or six years I spoke there, I don't think anybody heard a single word I said. And they always told me it was the best sermon ever. <laughs> so welcome. We'll try to do better today. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Diane is our reader. So, Diane, uh, I'm going to start the ser you're going to start our service together, and and then we'll continue through. Does anyone need a bulletin? Anyone need a bulletin? Okay. All right. Miss Diane. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Diane. Please now hear Mark 16 verses 1 to 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices, so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee that you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror, terror, and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you. To be to God. Christians all across the, the world will greet one another with a very familiar greeting this morning. And they will turn to one another and say, Christ the Lord is risen today and will respond with enthusiasm and excitement in saying he is risen indeed. So let's try it with enthusiasm <laughs> and excitement. So dear friends, Christ the Lord is risen today. He is risen indeed. I think you can do a lot better than that. I heard Rob. So here we go. Ready? Christ the Lord is risen today. He is risen indeed. Okay, that's much better. You know, the resurrection makes all the difference. Um, normal things that happen in life are difficult enough. But over the course of the last year, there's been the pandemic. Uh, lots of loss of life, friends, family due to that. The, the normal experiences of life, the challenges of life. Because of the resurrection we are people of hope. And the irony is not lost on me that we're standing in a cemetery. We're surrounded by the symbols and the reality of death. 
by that which we, in terms of our humanity, face the separation from ones we love. And if you were to look at all the tombstones here and read the names, each person would have a story, wouldn't they? Uh, something they've done in life, some place where they've been very proud and sometimes maybe where they've been less so. Even death with its seeming finality represented by these heavy granite stones is weaker and cannot overcome the resurrection. So thanks be to God that he is risen from the dead because that means that life is different. Now we're going to try and sing um, and I, I emphasize the try. You're going to sing well. The rest of us are going to try and sing. So here we go with Christ the Lord is risen today. We're just going to do two verses. But I can't imagine a sunrise service without this, this hymn. So, so here we go. And we're going to give it a shot. Ready? And the goose is ready too. <laughs> Christ the Lord is risen today. And heaven in chorus say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high, Alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth reply, Alleluia. Love's redeeming work is done, Alleluia. Fought the fight, the battle won. Alleluia. Death in vain forbids him rise. Alleluia. Christ has opened paradise. Alleluia. Let us pray. Wonderful Christ risen and living Savior. On this Easter Sunday morning, we come at sunrise to celebrate, to welcome, to acknowledge the greatness of your resurrection. We come because as the sun rises, we are reminded that it's a new day, a new beginning because Christ is risen all the things that would seek to harm us are defeated. Even death. And that Jesus Christ lives. We give thanks for the fact that Christ died for us on Good Friday. And that on Good Friday it seemed done, complete, over. But today, Easter signals a new day, a new beginning, a new start. We give thanks that you love us so much that you went to the cross, conquered death, and live today. Our souls soar because Christ lives. So please take a moment of silent prayer at this time. Join me in the prayer which Jesus taught the disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Diane read this morning from the Gospel, 
the account of Jesus rising from the dead and, and the women going to the tomb and them being informed on that first Easter that he is risen. That the place where he had been buried was not the place to look for him. That he's no longer dead, but alive. And that he's going to go ahead of them into Galilee. And I read this past week as I prepared for Easter Sunday, that Galilee represents for us the ordinary, the regular, the, the everyday place in which we live those things which make up our lives. So there's another story this time from the Gospel of Luke that I'd like to talk about for just a few moments about another ordinary experience. And that ordinary experience is two disciples taking a walk. And they're traveling from Jerusalem to Emmaus, uh, a distance of about six or seven miles, and, and they come to walk with one another and to talk about the different things that have happened over the past few days in Jerusalem. They're trying to make sense and, and significance, trying to understand what's happened. But it's beyond their capability. They are named Cleopas and an unnamed disciple. And some writers, some theologian scholars say that that writer is unnamed because it's our invitation to, to put ourselves there. That as we look at life and we look at Easter and put those two things together, we're trying to understand these stories that Christ is risen and alive and working in us and our world. And as they journey to, to Emmaus, a third person joins them. Now, the narrator, the writer, Luke, tells us it's Jesus. But those two who are traveling, Cleopas and perhaps us, we, for some reason, can't tell. And so as we walk along, we talk about the things that have happened. And this fellow traveler, this unknown third person, begins to explain from the very beginning of Scripture how all of this was a part of God's plan, God's purpose, and of how He brought this about for our salvation, for our forgiveness of sin, and for our new life. And, and, and how God's plan is even greater and extends even beyond until the ultimate defeat of evil and the victory of God's power and good. And it's getting close to evening. You know, we didn't walk really fast because we were talking and gesturing and trying to make our point and to listen. And so it's evening and we arrive at our destination. But the third traveler wants to keep going. And so he convinced him, though, to stay. And do you remember when they saw that it was Jesus? It was in the breaking of the bread that they realized who the traveler was. Now, I don't know if they saw the, the nail prints in his hand, or they just were familiar with Jesus' voice, or, or just whatnot, but they were made aware that this third traveler was Jesus. And I love the part of the story where it says they walked out to Emmaus, but that they ran with all that they had back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples that they have seen the Christ, that Christ is alive, that he is risen. And when they arrive there, they, the disciples say, he is risen, we have seen him also. So let's take just a moment and talk for what this story means to us. Here are two things I think this story means. First, God's plan and purpose is worked out in us receiving forgiveness of sin, new life, and experiencing 
personally the risen Christ. God has been putting into place opportunities for our forgiveness of sin, for our new life, new birth, new hope, for our salvation, and the hope of the resurrection ever since we as people began to sin. And that's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God that we love. Because, excuse me, God didn't wait till one moment in history, but God has been about the offering of forgiveness and hope and new life to us from the very beginning. We as Wesleyans believe that it is God who takes the initiative in reaching out to us in love. And say, I care so much about you that I'm not willing to wait. I'm going to step out. I'm going to begin. I'm going to reach out in love. The second thing I, I think happens is in the story is that when we encounter the risen Christ, our hearts burn. Have you ever had heartburn? Have you ever had heartburn? That's not the same thing. But our hearts burn. We have something about us that becomes passionate about helping others. You know, one of the great realities of Easter is we can't just say, oh, it's a beautiful day. Look at the sunrise. Hear the birds chirping and the geese flying over. And where's, where's my dog? And, you know, and, and, and all these things, because he's probably barking and celebrating up there in the car, you know, whatever you guys are. But we have to do something about Easter. Easter means that we are people of hope. And that all the stuff of life, children who are hungry, persons who are discriminated against, all the struggles of evils and problems and things that happen in our world, Easter means there's hope. And so just take a moment and look around. And just look at the beauty of God's creation, the beauty of this world, and the emptiness of the cross. And he is not on that cross because he is risen just as he said he would. And he goes ahead of us into Galilee, into that place where we live. And our world is forever changed because Christ is there. So friends, one more time, let's try it really, really well. Christ the Lord is risen today. He is risen indeed. Okay, you, get, you keep working at it, okay? <laughs> we'll be ready by next year. So we're going to try to sing one more time, okay? Rob, are you ready for this? Oh, yeah. All right, man. So we're going to try to sing Because He Lives. So let me get my paper out, even though I know this one pretty well, I think. And then we're going to try. I'm not I'll probably recognize it when you start, but I can't think of the tune. Okay, ready? <laughs> I can't believe I know something a song better than you do. Okay. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. He holds the future, and life is worth the living just because He lives. I'm glad we know it. <laughs> All right, we're going to try verse two. Think of Bill Gaither, okay? That's who wrote this. So now that we've done one, let's try two. Okay, here we go. How sweet to hold. A newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But greater still 
that calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Let me say to all of you, thank you for being here. Uh, here's, here's my plan for the future. We're going to have a sunrise service on Easter Sunday. Um, if the weather is bad, it will be inside. Just know you don't have to worry, you don't have to wonder if we're going to have it or not. If the weather's bad, we'll be inside. We've got plenty of room. If the weather's good, we'll be out here. We might next year be overlooking the, the pond uh, in mem the, uh, all the work done there in memory of Ernie. Um, but we're going to have it. And I hope next year to have breakfast. Now, what is the traditional breakfast on Easter Sunday? Anybody know? Pancakes. No. Not, who said pancakes? <laughs> there, no. Not, that's uh, not pancakes. That's, that's Shrove Tuesday. But you're... Okay, well, but if it's your family tradition, that's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said no, but no. I mean, I'll take anything at this point in time. But, um, you know, anybody know hot cross buns? Is always the traditional Easter Sunday morning uh, breakfast. So we'll try to find at least donuts. <laughs> and for Judy, pancakes. Um, anybody else who wants pancakes next year and the years ahead. So thank you for being here. Let me let me say the, the benediction for us this morning. Christ, we are so grateful and thankful that uh, you are risen. And because you are alive and risen, it makes all the difference in the world. That which seemed to defeat and destroy our hopes and dreams of aspirations has instead been defeated itself. And so we pause this morning and we give thanks. And we celebrate this new life in Christ. The beauty of this day, this new creation, this mini Easter, which calls us to live for you, to love God, to love others, to give and serve in this your world. Thank you for Easter. All this we say in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I didn't know I'd have to apologize for the sunrise service, Judy, but it's good to see you. So, no breakfast, but McDonald's is open. Trust me, I know. And I didn't buy this. Diane bought it for me, so thank you. So, welcome, everybody. Have a happy Easter. Anybody have big questions?